12 verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Then verse 2, because this is a transformation series, it says to us, be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed. Now, the series is transformation series. How do I get transformed? So today, I'll be teaching you in literal, clear terms, the transformation process. But it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good. Please note that, that it's when you renew your mind and you're in the process of being transformed that you prove what is good, one, acceptable. That's as I said, some conduct are unacceptable. Two, perfect, meaning matured. Three, will of God. So the will of God is extremely important, which means conforming to this world is not the will of God. Leave I alone, leave I alone, Matthew. Matthew, leave I alone. Conforming to this world is not the will of God. Does that make sense? Conforming to this world is not the will of God. And is there, again, I will repeat it. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Meaning, conformity to the world is actually the threat for being transformed. So the reason I'm teaching this series is I'm very bothered, not for those members here alone, but for members, Christians, outside this auditorium, that say they are born again, they are Christians, and they are not transformed. And we cannot find transformation over them. We still see them the same things they're doing. Christianity is an inward renewal that produces an outward transformation. So at some point, your transformation may take longer than mine, but these people can see a transformation gradually taking place. If there is no transformation, and listen to this very carefully, and this is my concern, if I'm not seeing a transformed person, then I, I am not sure you're saved. It might be slow, it might take a while, I might be confused, I might be wrong, but if I'm not seeing a transformation, then I may look closely, I might likely say conformity. Now, conformity is a threat to transformation. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. I mean, two, two simple scriptures. Do not, now that you're born again, not you're saved, do not conform. So week one, I taught us what conformity transformation means. Week two, I taught us the difference between transfiguration and transformation. That your figure, your external outlook may change. That does not mean you are transformed. And I explained to you, the Bible says that the ministers of the devil, that Satan himself was transfigured, transfigured, not transformed. The word is transfigured, and Jesus himself was transfigured. At some point, transfiguration is momentary, is immediate, is an imposition of an external look on you. But that's not transformation. Transformation is more, it takes more time as a process, takes inner renewal that shows external and outward transformation. So you see Christians that after five years, six years, seven years, ten years, are not transformed. Try your, I'm bothered, and I'm not joking about that. I'm willing to wait. You're wearing tattoo, you're drinking, you're smoking, you get born again today. I'm going to give you six months to nine months, one year. If I do not see slight transformation in outward conduct, in not your appearance as it were, but in your outward conduct, then I doubt there is an inner renewal going on. I do not doubt that you are probably saved. Your spirit was regenerated, but you refused to feed that spirit in this new life. So, and if you're not transformed, the question is this, and this is a million dollar question I want you all to answer. Is it possible not to be transformed and not to conform? I'm not conforming to the world and I'm not transformed. No, no, think a bit. No, no, you must think. Oh. 
Because if, oh, no, 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 let's think. This is Bible study. Is it possible not to be conformed? I'm not going to conform to the world, but I also refuse to transform myself to the world. Are you sure? Are, are you sure? Because so many people are not seeing the transformation and they're trying not to be conformed to the world. Watch me. And they are wearing a form of godliness. Well, that's how they deceive you and I. Forget they deceive us, man. They wear a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof. So Paul spoke about those people that they have a form. Oh, God help me. A form. God help me. They wear cassock and collar. A form is called piety. They wear a form. But you and I, watch me, you and I are deceived with the form. But they are not transformed. They are actually conforming to the world in other subtle areas. And part of their conformity to the world is to wear the looks. Because the world is okay with wearing the looks. It's part of what the world has trained themselves to do. You want a particular job of this, wear the look. When you wear that look, people will likely buy the product. What they are buying is the look. So, so because I've struggled with this statement I made now, struggled, because I've seen many people that I think honestly are saved, but I'm not seeing transformation. And I told you transformation starts from the inside. If it is by the renewing, listen, by the renewing of your mind, internal renewal. So that internal renewal changes, changes your tastes and your appetites. I used to like smoking. I used to like drinking. So that taste for drinking and smoking begins to reduce gradually. Who can tell me why? Internal renewal. God bless you, man. So it's there. No, immediately you may not see the external transformation but the thirst is being killed gradually the, th the yearning is being killed being taken off gradually after a while I start yearning for all the things that I didn't yearn for before the word of God fellowship with believers, prayer meeting and then when that begins to go in, as you start seeing a new me a new me where on the outside places I go to, things I do, things I eat things I wear, things I say things I use, I stop using the F word, I start using the J word, the Jesus word, my phraseology changes, I start using praise God comfortably hallelujah, sincerely it takes a while. But conformity is a major threat to transformation. And many of us don't know that some people visibly conform. Some people passively conform. And the passive conformity has crept into the church. So when I have not worldly song, but just gospel Fuji. Not worldly rap, but just gospel rap. Not worldly this, just gospel that. Not worldly fornication, just gospel fornication. No, sorry, excuse me, forgive me. Forgive me. Oh, I'm sorry about that. So we begin to, not, not living in sin, but living lovers. I'm sorry about that. Whose idea was living lovers? The world. The world. Is he in the church now? It's confirmed, it doesn't know in it. It's confirmed. And let me now show you the video I saw. I, I showed this video to my staff and we discussed it seriously. And I didn't even realize it. I was trying to tell my staff and I, I teach them and I train them every now and then. And I saw the video. All of you listen to this, watch this video. It's, and they say most people are sheep. You know, most people are sheep. So give me volume. You're going to watch this video twice. And you're going to see. No, no, start, start again. Start over again. Start over again. Start, start over again. Listen, watch it. Very good video. Go ahead. To answer that question, we set up a hidden camera experiment to see if this woman would stand up at the sound of this tone simply because everyone else is. You might be thinking you'd never go along with this. Or would you? After just three weeks, 
without knowing why she's doing it, this woman is now conforming perfectly to the group. Conforming. Watch this. Watch this. Have a seat and they'll be out in just a couple of minutes. Thanks so much. <laughs> Just wondering why is he standing? Uh-uh. Why is he standing? Pause, pause, pause. He asked, why are you standing? She said, she said, everybody is doing it. So I thought I am supposed to do so. Watch the answer she gave. Watch the answer she gave. Continue. You think she'll teach the new guy what to do? <laughs> Try it. He joined. <laughs> we kept the cameras rolling as more unsuspecting patients arrived. <laughs> oh yeah. She's wondering why what's going on here. Okay, I'll join them. There you go. That sounds like Alice. We all join them. He joined. Eventually joined the ranks. Okay, <laughs> 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 the thing more shocking than seeing how easily conformity affects the way you act <laughs> is that similar forces are subconsciously shaping the way you think. Put your hands together, everybody. Is that video very clear? Does that sound like Romans 12 verse 2? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Did you see how everybody did what everybody was doing without asking, why are we doing it? It's called social influence. You just keep doing it. So the only way you can stop doing what everybody is doing is when you renew your own mind to say, why am I doing what I'm doing? Let me put off something new inside my mind then you can say, no, I ain't going to do that. That's not what he told me to do. But because you have a he that's now influencing you differently, you can say, no, 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 I don't think that's going to be acceptable will of God that you may prove what is good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Oh, no, you missed that. Will of God. Oh, no, you missed it. What we do is the will of the social, social norms. Not God. So we're not sure. We don't want to have fear of missing out. FOMO. I don't want to stand out alone. So Romans 12 says that we may prove 
what is good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Shh, not the world. Because there is a world that they say don't be conformed to. And there is a God. There is a kingdom here that is struggling with another kingdom. There is an order here and an order. So, because most Christians, watch me, watch me, watch me, are not seeing this God, but they see this world. So we easily, through social pressure, without us thinking or transformed mind, just conform. We just what? Conform. Without even knowing what we do. I mean, I watch this in our house in a meeting on Monday, all my staff, and some say, no, I won't stand. No, Dr. Morundi has sat them down and explained that most of us are doing many things today that we just conform to, including wearing a suit. Today I had a debate with one of my daughters. Why must we wear suit on Sunday? It's not right. It's not important. I said, I don't know. We just have to conform. It's a formal, it's a formal way. Of, it's my own formal dressing. And I, and I told them, I, I told them from the Bible, from the Bible, from, and this is very important, from the Bible, God, God, God Almighty gave a uniform code to the priests. If you be a priest and a Levite, you will come to my altar. You must dress this way. Eh, but it's not, New Testament. it's not New Testament. No, 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 no. It is New Testament. Jesus, in Matthew 23, did not cancel the dress code for the priest. In fact, in addition to tithing, he validated it. He said, you people wear flat trees. You dress well. You wear white attire. Okay. But I'm angry that inside... You are wicked. You have sin. You have evil. He did not condemn the appearance. He condemned the inner. He said, I'm not saying you should be white, but make sure you're not white sepulchre. Make sure you, are, you have inside also good stuff. Does that make sense? So there's nothing wrong with the outside. So if Christ is not condemned, you have in a uniform to go to your altar. Why should I? Okay. I said, okay, sir, what should be the uniform? Should it be a suit? I said, that's another debate. The pastors can see that debate. What should be our formal uniform? To choose a uniform, you choose what is socially acceptable as formal dress code. So if you wear a t-shirt and this, nobody will take that seriously that you're formal. When you go to your offices, there's a way you dress. I'm at work here. People don't know it. Whenever I climb this place, I'm at work. I'm at work. Because I'm here on behalf of heaven. And the one that called me to serve him in this capacity has told me dress formally so the people can honor and respect me if I disrespect this place by dressing anyhow. You will have no fear of God. That's why the choir also have a uniform. They dress to say we must be formal. So conformity to the world is something that we all do every day, but we must be careful because we all eat, we all do this, but we must make sure that the world, the systems that are anti-God is what we must not conform to. You can put it down. The systems in the world that are not anti-God, that are pro-human, are definitely also godly. I was hungry, did not feed me. I was naked. That is pro-human. Christ said we should feed the poor, help the naked. So some NGOs are doing that in the world, so I'm not conforming to the world. Actually, the world is picking up their stuff from the church. They may be doing it better than us, you know, but they probably picked it from us. Praise God. So today's teaching has been explicitly described in that video. And for those of you that have wisdom, wise minds, will look and say, wait a minute, that's true. Most of the things we do, did you amaze you how that woman stood up the first time? Did you get the, quest, the answer she gave to the question? That was what struck me. She was so sincere, so honest, and so truthful. The man asked sincerely, why are you standing up? Beep. The man was, was, was wondering. Like I would ask, why are you standing up? And the moment I get the answer, what should I do? I will not stand up. But the man stood up too. That's why I was angry with the man. Because the man asked the question, why are you standing up? And the man gave you a very honest answer. I don't know why. I came in here, people are standing, so I, stand, I stood up, thinking that's how we should be doing here. Okay? So I just say, okay, this one is stupid. Okay? I won't be stupid. Then the next time she stood up, he joined. And he sat down. Why? I don't know. He joined. And he sat down. 
Others came in. The rebel said, I will not stand. You know that rebel? I will not stand. I will not stand. I will not stand. I have to stand. <laughs> and, stood. and that's how we make most of our decisions subconsciously without knowing why we do what we do. That's what the Bible calls do not conform to this world. So, listen to me. The only way you will not conform to the world is by being transformed. I bet you, if you choose not to consciously, deliberately, intentionally renew your mind, you are bound to conform to the world. Bound. There's no other way. Because we just agree you can't not be transformed and not be conformed. If you try not to be conformed deliberately, but you're not working to be transformed intentionally, what will you be doing? You'll be wearing a form. And that's why we have 60% of believers in Lagos. Even the ultra conservative churches just wearing a form. When they go home, they conform. In church, they do what? They appear to be, <coughs> they appear to be transformed. I like that word. When you wear a form, having a form of goodness is to appear to be. Because Pastor Funke is looking at me. Pastor Tura is watching me. Let me appear to be. Many, many years ago, when we go up on again, those ladies appear to be. They took off their hearings, took off their things as they entered church. Once they left church, they wore it back. Because they told them you can't wear earrings and be a Christian. So they tie the scarf, they take the earrings off, and their parents, my God, they passed 100%. So they find foolish men marrying their parents. They get them, find the real woman. Ah! No, why I go? I was just wearing a. Do you know where they were wearing from? Can't tell you why. Listen to me. This is very important. They were truly born again. Truly, honestly, sincerely. But refused eh, to renew their minds. That's the truth. They, they didn't take that renewal as a task that must be done. And so when they refused to renew, and because they are saved, there's a conscience of the world there. When they see the world, they say, ah, we're not supposed to be doing this anymore. So they They've been told like A, B, C, thou shall not, thou shall not. So they ran from some of the very obvious worldly things. But they're also not making efforts to be transformed. I don't, you get that point? So what they, what they had to do was what? To wear a form. I just showed you. I just showed you. So they don't want to be conforming. So they now start to do what? Wear the form. Wear the form. Wear the form. So people would think they are godly. They're not godly. And many of us, including me, were deceived by the looks. Oh, that person is the born again. Oh, let's put them here. But they were struggling. So, very simple. For you to be, to be what? Is it appear beautiful outward, but within full of demons? So, is that outward appearance that we magnified as spirituality? Yet, it was only piety. As far as the Bible is concerned, piety. Piety. So, this transformation series is actually a very serious series. Because the onus is on who? On you. If you want to be what? Transformed. The Holy Ghost will not make you transformed. At best, it can transfigure you. If you spend 50 days in his presence, 40 days, your face will shine like an angel. You will come down from the mountain. Say, ah, this man is transfigured. That doesn't mean you are transformed. It happened to Moses. It happened to Jesus. They were transfigured. The presence of God transfigured them. Changed and altered their looks for a moment. After a while, the thing fades away. You go back to the real thing. Because permanent, genuine transformation starts where? Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Present continuous tense. Continue. Look at Bible study, empty. Look at Sunday service, empty. Look at during the week, you eat junk food. Junk food. Junk food, spiritually. And you want to be transformed? How? 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 
You're not making any deliberate effort to change your mind and your heart and you're assuming that on the outside you'll be godly. Oh no, you won't be. But these things are not, it's not rocket science. It's not, it's not very clear. Very clear. There's no other passage that can be as clear as Romans 12 verse 2. Eh? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Simple. Be not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed. Very simple. How? I, I, I won't teach you how to work. This one is natural. This one is spiritual. By the renewal of your mind. That you may now prove or live. People will now see what is good, perf- acceptable, and perfect will of God. Praise God. I said, praise God. So, it tells you that, you see, in that passage of conformity, conformity is a magnetic pull. It, it pulls you to do things you don't want to do. You just find yourself doing it. You don't even know why you're doing it. And the world has a very strong magnetic pull. Very strong. It comes out in fashion statements, which is not bad. Some are terrible. They ask them, why are you doing it? Everybody is doing it. Everybody is wearing it. So why shouldn't I wear it? I'm not saying don't wear it. I'm only asking, why are you wearing it? The most of them, the answer is, everybody is doing it. It's called trends. It's trending. I'm not saying don't. Do. I'm not condemning trends. Do. I'm only saying, why are you doing it? It's trending. I'm not saying it's bad. Don't get me wrong. But we need to just agree that the only reason I'm doing it is because it's trending. Shake it now. So you must tell yourself it's trending. And there's nothing wrong with it. I agree, it's trending. So we must agree, it's what? Trending. There's no spirituality in it. So, so the question I've often asked is, who determines trends? Eh? The world. Who determines trends? Pastor Trent is saying the world. The church too has determined some trends. Deeper than I've created a trend and was trending. CSC determined a trend years ago. It was trending. Let me tell you who determines trends. Listen to me. Celebrities. 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 So if, for instance, a big celebrity wears, what's it called, beret, like Mrs. Chingu. She's wearing his beret. Watch the next three years. It becomes very popular. She has 20 million followers. You see more berets wearing Christians. It becomes trending. Oh. Is it trending? Don't know it. You can determine a trend. If Casalis has 25 million followers, I can deliberately create a trend. Everybody will be doing it. You follow me? One man called Casabasi. He created a trend, Jerry Call. People are Jerry Calling. It's trend. We don't know. celebrities determine trends. Either worldly celebrities or Christian. But we Christian celebrities don't even know how to create a trend. There was a man that called Tyson. He created a trend. He's echoed, ma'am. Everybody was very enticing. Just because he was boxing people and beating them up back and blue. Just caught his eyes. People were just doing enticing, 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 enticing. He trended on. Everybody was, ah, you know that he caught. Everybody, everybody was very enticing. He caught enticing, enticing. They go to the Papi shop, what? Give me enticing, give me enticing. They have never met him in their life. I want to wear enticing. I want to wear enticing. Because people don't understand the science behind trends. The one trend is what everybody's doing. Two celebrities determine trends. Because we have a celebrity culture all over the world. We follow celebs without us even knowing why. Ah, it's raining now. Anklet. If you go and find out one of one celebrity just like wearing it, everybody's just wearing it. Nobody really can even trace who started first. Am I saying it's wrong? No. I'm only saying, why can't our Christian celebs? Create a different trend. Yeah. Why can't they create their own trend? Kanye West so he's trying to create a trend in his own style. Why can't we create our own? So those in our kingdom can follow suit. Foundation of truth assembly tried creating one. We walked a bit, but we didn't have money. What was a cross? I went to places, I saw people wearing crosses. If you see how proud I was, I they didn't even know me. One man named me says, Do you see this? One man says, Every time I see him, sir, sir, the cross. I'm wearing the cross. I said, Thank you. We didn't, we didn't even push it out. We didn't spend money. Imagine if I spent a billion to push that idea everywhere across me. We didn't have that kind of money. We just did small. We made some small noise and people bought into it. Trends. Trends. 
That's how it's all start. If the Pope wears a cross for the next six months, people will be wearing crosses. They don't know why. Why Pope is wearing it? That's how trends start. Because it's, it's fashionable to wear a cross. It's fashionable. And that's one way I, I thought God would give us money today. So you belong as a church, you say, I take to belong. Let's do money more cross, cross campaign everywhere. Everywhere! But we insist all the Christian governors must wear cross. If you don't wear cross, we won't vote for you. They wear cross. Those who they want to vote, they wear cross. They'll say, I support the cross. Oh, those want to vote. Trends. We must decide what people wear to know that we're influencing people. But that's transformation. Let me now go to three or four ways. Let me go to the mind because you see the word mind is so powerful. You know when I learned computer in the early 80s, the first thing I wanted to do when I went to a computer school in the early 80s, they told us giggle, garbage in, garbage out. I didn't know that phrase is from scriptures. Garbage in, garbage out. Jeremiah 17, 9 tells us the heart of man is deceitful above all things. Jesus said a good man is known by the good treasures of his heart. So it's that heart in the, in the Hebrew and, and Greek, it means kardia. Kardia means your heart. Now some use the word mind, psyche. There are two different words used for both the mind and heart interchangeably. In the Old Testament, you won't find a lot of the word mind used. Sometimes heart is used more and heart is used for the soul. Sometimes used for your essence. So you have to understand that when you read those things, when it means something internal, not something external. Does that make sense? If we're talking about the physical art, we're speaking about the seat of affections and emotions. Seat of affections, emotions, and thinking faculty. So when it says, by renewing your mind, it was in psyche, the place where you used to think, where you have your feelings, where you have your emotions. So if you can, if you can renew, the Greek word renew means to renovate. To renovate means do not demolish it. This building was bought the way it was and we renovated it to this point. If you had come here years ago, you'd be shocked. Now, this is a transformation that has been carried out from this building through renovation. How? By knocking down two, three rooms and making this room better than that room. The rooms that didn't start bare, we knock it and say, we're not going to start bare here anymore. We're renovating. We're putting in new stuff and putting on old stuff. So renovate, renew your mind means to renovate your mind, to, to, to change the entire structure and the purpose and the use of that house called the mind. It's a house. It's a house. And that's what Jesus said in Matthew 15, the Matthew 12 as well, that out of the good treasures of the heart, a man is known by what he treasures within. And an evil man is also known by what they treasure within. Matthew chapter 12, verse number 35. Matthew 12, verse 35. Matthew 15, verse 19 says, Out of the heart of man proceeds. You see, a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart. A good man, especially a good man. Say it again. For the last time. Brings forth good things. So who can tell me that three things there? The man. The heart. The product brings forth. Can I say it again? The man, the heart, the product brings forth. The word brings forth means product. So of these three, which one influences which one is most influential? The heart. So the a man is defined by what? Because his heart can only the product can only be from the heart. So the way you know a good man. It's not by the content of his heart, but the treasures of his heart. There is no man that sometimes filthy content don't go in. What they do, they push it out. They do not treasure it. Oh, you miss that. You miss that. Bad content. You're walking the street, you're watching a movie, you see pornography. You don't want to watch it. But some, I want to watch it. Because you treasure it. So a good man, out of the good treasure, not the content. Some, oh, out of the abundance of man's heart, the mouth speaks, that's the mouth. But the product is determined by the treasure. Am I communicating? That's why some people treasure the word. I love the word. 
When I hear a preacher preach something that is deep, I can spend one hour to study more. Because I what? Treasure. Some don't treasure the world. This generation, this generation, this generation, they don't treasure the world. You people on YouTube, you don't treasure the world. My social media team came to tell me, sir, every time we boost, you know, we push out, push out your word, the world we preach in church, nobody follows us. Nobody doesn't trend, doesn't go viral. But today we show you dancing. Me, just dancing here. You see my video will go bam. Today we show you your shoes. They come to the office, just show me dressing up. I said, What are you doing? Sandra, Daddy want to show you. What are you doing? Just show me this. I said, okay, guys. My video trends. I said, ah. ah! This generation, Nancy, what two people treasure? What they treasure? I'm telling you. The day I was with my wife in Christmas period, that she was doing her makeup, we had a photo shoot, and I was also saying her makeup. They were taking it, and they put it. He had thousands of views, thousands. The person just doing pancake, thousands. Thousands. So I'm like, how is that inspiring? The people are, they treasure it. If you want to know what this generation treasure, go and check what goes viral, what trends. Uh, well, at one time, it was the word. Rema, Rema, what, what? They don't want the word though. They don't want Rema. To them, not me. To them, not me. To them, turn that fire, Rema. They don't want Rema. Listen, and you are sharing Rema. Hallelujah! I have insight for where I turn that fire. Which inside? I beg, turn that fire around. Because I've, I've seen that word thunder, thunder fire. They use thunder a lot. Am I right, pious? They use thunder, thunder, thunder. I wonder where the thunder came from. <laughs> they are not interested and they didn't pinch me. Not like we can. I said they pain them, they see us. But they pain me. They pain me. Oh, they pain me. That no, not dress your word. They pain me. I'm not saying they're sitting now. As they sit now, they pain me. As they pain me, they sit now. That I don't like word, 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 Rema. I don't like word. They pain me. You cannot go like word. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good product. So you cannot see why we're not bringing forth good product. Because we do not treasure this word. If you treasure word, you will produce worded generation and godly. If you treasure flaky, lightweight pleasures, sort of things, you will, gener you will produce it. You see why we are producing these things? Because that's what we treasure. He says, an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, produces evil things. So all of you must define yourself by what you treasure within. If I stop there, I've done my job today. That's why we're not seeing transformed Christians. That's what I'm going to. We're not transformed because the things that we transform us, we do not. If we treasure it, every Bible study, Sunday will be the back to the back to the full. Because we teach the word here. They do not treat. Whatever what you do, do whining. Preach, call 5,000 people, they won't come. Do mega prayers. Bring it back tonight, tonight, Wednesday. The place will be full. <laughs> Next Wednesday, bring it back. Church will be full to the back. Just one jump. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Shout yeah. Shout yo. Shout yeah, yeah, yeah. They will just come and shout yeah, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, it is out of the treasure. So, how do we change this generation? Change what they treasure. That's my task. How do I do that? I honestly don't know. I may need to have a few people to sit down with me and say, How do we address what you treasure? Because it's what you treasure that you will produce. You cannot change it. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, Bring forth. You can only produce what you treasure. You can never produce what you hate. Because you don't want it. You cannot produce what you dislike. Because you dislike it. But what you treasure, what you prefer, what you like, what you, what you yearn for, you will produce. I want to eat dodo. 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 What will I go to the kitchen to go and look for? Dodo. As I'm looking for dodo, okay there. I'm planting. I'm seeing tomato. I'm seeing potato. Will I go and cook it? Because I don't like it. Even though it's around, I will not cook it. 
I will not look for it. I can only produce what, I pre- what is precious to me. It's around. The world is around. The Bible is around. Loaded. You will not produce because you don't treasure it. Put your hands together, everybody. So you see why we have to change our hearts now. So we have to really work on ourselves and say, because we cannot be transformed until we renew. We cannot renew until we change our appetites. You must deliberately say, I want the things of heaven. Because the heart is deceitful. So to, to, to do garbage in, garbage out, Proverbs chapter 4, my favorite passage, verse 20. Give me Proverbs 4, 20. Giggle. Proverbs 4, 20 to 23. I love Proverbs 4. My son! This was written by the wisest man called Solomon to his son, Rehoboam, Jeroboam, Jeroboam, Rehoboam, and others. Did they obey his words? No. <laughs> the man was the wisest. Attend to my words. Did they attend to it? No. Incline your ear to my sayings? No. Next verse. Next verse. Verse 21. Let them not depart out of thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Two ways to get to your gateway to your heart. The eyes and the ears. And the exit into your heart. What you hear and what you see. Audio, visual. So if this church does not go into television, we've left television because we have money. If you don't go back to the place, we will not be able to change people. Those that have, what that word? Look, give me a word, a word that has to do with those in control. God bless you. Those in control of media will only and can only transform their lives. No matter how good your intentions are, no matter how great your word is, the moment I'm not hearing, I'm not seeing. Is there? You don't have any impact. That's why we're not doing so well. So even if a nonsense man is preaching nonsense and controls media, the people become nonsense. Because you can only become what we hear and see. Constantly. You can never become what you have not access to. What you have access to is the only thing that can transform, inform, reform you. The world is still formed. Either you're informed and not transformed, which is education without revelation. Or you are informed to be a social creature but not born again. Or you are transformed, which is salvation, to become a saint. Because people can be reformed, because reformers are not transformed. You reform organizations, you reform entities. You get the point now, reforms. But transform is something deeper, stronger, and powerful, more eternal. Thank you, Timer. More eternal in nature. Am I communicating? So he says that my son, attend to it with your ears. Am I right? Keep your eyes. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Let them know the Bible from your eyes. Those two things are the ways to keep them where. So what you have here and here. So sh- 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 imagine if I have the wrong things here and here. Garbage in. So how do we get garbage in? Audio, visual. Audio, visual. I can lock you in a room for 90 days and I just play gospel song, gospel this. By the time you come out, you are blessing this gospel song. Lock you for 30 days. You play unbeliever song, come out. Every day you wake up, it's unbeliever song. Ah. Oh. Only ghost, go and try it. Don't try unbeliever, but try a godly one. Because <laughs> don't, don't go and try unbeliever one. Is there garbage in? So, this is a process. Transformation, what? Process. That's why I'm burdened. I want us to fellowship as a church. We're working with them. How do we fellowship more? Because Christians are no more being formed. We don't, we don't have Christians anymore. We run from fellowshipping. Give me next verse. Next verse now says, verse 23. They are life to those that find them, health to their flesh. Look at verse 23, all of you. 23. Keep your heart with all diligence. I like it. For out of it are the issues of life. You better go and read that passage in other translations. Forces of destiny. The word life means your entire destiny. Your future. That's what life means. Your life, your entire life. Force, issues means Destiny, what we did, where you are going to go to in life, is that heart that will determine it. You see, for it determines the ah, thank you. Clap for my media man. Clap, 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 clap. Look at this translation. 
Guard your heart above all else. Why? That's the real transition. It determines. I'm not you. The course of your life. How you will end up. It is here. Mercy, Lord. So if you open up where you should guard, and the heart must be guarded, protected. Look at me why. A lot of junk information out there. And that information will affect you if you allow so much of it inside you. Don't tell me I'm born again, it can affect me. Okay. It was wiser than the scriptures. He said, guard it. Guard it. So if you're going to be transformed, the first place is what? Your heart. What do you do? Number one, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Colossians 3.16, write it down. Five ways to be transformed. If you want to be a transformed Christian, five ways. One, let the word of God, word of Christ, dwell in you richly. How do you let it dwell in you? I just told you. Read it, hear it. Read it. I have audio Bible. I play it every morning. I just play my audio Bible. I just play it. I'm brushing my teeth. I'm walking around. I'm just saying the Bible. Just, just listening to the Bible. Just, just listening. Uh, it's just my decision. No. Some of you listen to motivation speakers. I listen to the author, the Word of God. Just listen to just audio Bible. Just be listening to Bible. Just be listening to Bible. Watch, watch YouTube. Watch Rebecca Sally on YouTube. Watch old messages. Who was telling me? Was it you? Telling me that you watch my old my message, uh, Lamentation of Tama. He said he just listens to it every now and then. I preached it many years ago, almost 20 years ago. Lamentation of Tama. One of, I, I saw one of the reasons why I don't want to go, I want to go out to TV. Minister Violet sent me a, a, a message by somebody I don't know. She said she was, she's in Canada now. She's reading a book. She said she watched, she was going through a middle crisis in her life. And she turned on the TV one day. Then we're still beaming us on this US in your state. And as she watched the message that I preached on, hey, Violet, what's that message, Joe? The dance of Salome. Now she watched the message on dance of Salome. And that message changed her life, transformed her being, never met me in this life, began to preach that message everywhere, went to Canada, written a book. The topic of the book is dance of Salome. It's on Amazon. She's dedicated to me. She wanted me to please just write it forward and say, yes, I appreciate that because I will see it out there. She sent me a mail from someone I don't know the person. I said, Violet, we have to go back on TV. You'll be shocked how these things travel far. How many people you are blessing here and there. And the devil is saying, let's take money away so they will not publish the gospel. It's a modern way of publishing the gospel. We just, we just added it just last month. I don't know the person. I said, reply her. Ah, give her my blessing to use the message. I, I mean, she referred to it. Use it. It's God's word. Freely you have received. God gives you insight that the depth of insight in that scripture I preached that you had never seen it. She now wrote a book on it. <laughs> I felt so honored, so happy that somebody is dragged from this well and is written a book that others will drink from. <laughs> <laughs> Out of a belly shall flow rivers of living waters. People are going to drink from that well. Others will drink from that well. You said Tama, you gave the message of Tama to somebody else in America. The person said that message, bless them. Read the word, hear the word. You become transformed. You run from the Bible. You run from Bible study. You run from Sunday service. They say it's too long. Man of God preaches too long. Preach 30 minutes. They have service one hour. Want to dance one hour? Hear the word 30 minutes. And half of the and the dance that we'll be doing is that of Salome. Number two, number two, change your fellowship. This is my burden. I'm very burdened. If you walk with the prophets, you become a prophet. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 5 to 11. Saul, who had no prophetic art, walked with the company of the prophets and he began to prophesy. Proverbs 30, 13, 30 says, He that walketh with the wise shall be wise. Change your fellowship. I am particularly burdened that they may. This church has no vital fellowship. Youth fellowship, not existing. Men fellowship, Kule, not existing. Women fellowship, not existing. Fellowship! Fellowship! I became a Christian because of attraction. I stayed back in church because of fellowship. Fellowship! 
Fellowship. It simply means friendship. Church is not a workplace. Church is a house and a home. Kule is my brother. Jude is my brother. We must fellowship. We will fight on must fellowship. Next month, the series we're taking in this church next month is fellowship. The entire month is dedicated to fellowship. The entire month. Because there are so many walls that we have to break down. We have to break down and be friends again. The fact that we're friends does not mean we'll fight ourselves. I'd rather be offended by my brother in church. If I show you the scripture that changed my life, Jesus Christ himself said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? This that do the will of God. Christ redefined family. And we are saying we are Christians. And we are fighting his own definition of family. His own definition of family is not the Casalizo. It's the Fotarians. They are my family. That's what the Bible, Jesus, Jesus called family. Our Lord, our Savior. Our Lord and Savior. And that is what we are fighting. We see ourselves as strangers and as that's why we Abuja Church is stronger than us. All their members are like this. The ushers, they play too much than they even pray. But it's better, they are friends. They are friends. They are very do you know what friendship can do with strong leadership? Now I was telling you about I'm preaching this on Sunday on capacity that God chose Peter because of capacity. No, I told you that. Jude, Peter said, I go a fishing. I was reading that passage today. Peter said, I go a fishing. They said, we also go with you. Do you, you know who said it? Non-fishermen. We saw that James and John are fishermen. Nathaniel was not. Thomas was not. The four people that followed him. I said, how can this man influence people even to areas where they're not even... You don't get it. They were not fishermen before. You don't get it. They said, we also go with you. You don't get it. Eh? And just tell us anywhere. Even area where we don't have expertise. That we never were, we're not, we're never fishing. But let's go. For me, I was like, oh, sit down. What about fishing? Let's go. No, we're going with you. You will teach us. It's all about fellowship. They just wanted to be around Peter. Because they were in one house. Friendship, fellowship, strong leader. Peter. Strong leader. So strong to the point where you can even change your profession. Because of him, you become a fisherman. You can like somebody so much. Because of the man, you say, I want to be a fisherman. <laughs> That's how strong his leadership was. The people became fishermen because of him. Hey, Peter, don't joke with that guy. Don't joke with him. We need such men in our midst. They will say, I go for Kersel. They say, we also go with you. And Kersel is almost dead. Fellowship. And you want to be transformed. How can we be transformed when we are in wrong associations? And associations inf infuse and influence us. The, show me your friends. I tell you who you are. Even the world says that. Show me your friends. I tell you who you are. That's I'm proud of some people in this church who have so many good friends within their family. I like them. You see, today who are they always come together. They are friends. They met each other. They are family. There's nothing wrong with that. Why they do so? Yeah, today they just say you they go to each other's house to watch football. It's as friendship and spirituality stopped off from watching football. No. What do they do out there that we can't do in here? Apart from womanize, smoke, and drink. Every other thing they do that we can do. Pastor, you me? Let's do our soon night on Saturday. Just eat and do our soon. For some guys that, oh, okay, we're doing a lecture. Just come and do our soon. We eat our soon. We dish and do. We do. Am I right? That is what they call what? Fellowship now. What is wrong with you people? They are so spiritual, you can't fellowship. For looking, I don't understand our, our own spirituality. We're so spiritual, we can't fellowship. Pious, be in my house on Sunday night. Yes, sir. What I will do? Just sit down, watch football, and then just eat and so we can't do that. Because you want to, you are living a fake life. You want to show us that you only pray, you don't play. We all play. Christ played. Christ said, let's go away. Well, it away. Because they did not have time for leisure. Leisure. Christ told them they was gonna have leisure. Christ, Jesus Christ, our Lazarus. Jesus Christ. Man chapter 6. He said, let's go apart a little while. For they did not have time for leisure. Let me give you so you can go home to go and begin to look at your Christianity from everyone's perspective. Because our Christianity is warped. We keep thinking that we want to be more spiritual than Christ. It's only in this place, Mark 6, 31. Give me Mark 6, 31. He said to them, come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were so many coming and going, they had no leisure. Leisure. So God wants us to have, no leisure is to go and play, relax. 
We call it re, re, uh, recreation, Abby. What is wrong with us? That's Jesus Christ, oh. Jesus, oh. Jesus, oh. The business you go and pray, oh. On the, uh, 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 what the retreat we do is play, 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 play. It's not retreat you go and relax. We're going to relax very soon, Abby, on a cruise. Those who are relaxed. The Lord will help you people, oh. Alice is laughing at me. Praise God. Change your fellowship. Embrace inspirational music and worship. Second Kings chapter 3, verse 15. If you want, music is powerful. If you want to have a transformed life, you must change the music. I love music. I love worship. There's nothing we worship. It's embrace music. Embrace. If you want to transform life, read good books. Educate your mind. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. Paul said to Timothy, Bring my parchment. 2 Timothy 4, verse 13. He said, bring me the books. I want to read some books. Jesus said, I want to read some books. Finally, watch what you focus on. You become what you behold. You become what you behold. You see, you see, I'm the books. You become what you behold. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. You become what you behold. We all beholding in a face are changed into the same image. You become what you behold. You become what you behold. Put your hands together for Jesus. I'm going to take one, just one question before I, go, I close with all the prayers. Just one question. Any questions? Any questions? If there is no question, it's good for me so we can pray and we can have service close. And we're going to ask God to help us so that we can learn and we can have it transformed. From next week, we're going to start a new series in church. And the series is about you know, um, relationships. We're going to be discussing how to build fellowships in church. Practical ways to build in fellowships. How do we break down the walls? How do we bring people together? How do we fellowship as one and as a church? Shall we rise to pray in the absence of any questions? Shall we rise to pray? Rise, rise to pray. Rise to pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Spend the next one minute to pray for what you heard that this word will not stand against you in judgment, that this word it will live it out. Praise God. Ask God to help you that this word will digest. You will ingest it. You will internalize it. You will become what you behold and God will help you to behold the right things. God will help you to behold the right things. You behold the right things. Come on, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Come on, consecrate your heart, consecrate your soul. Has God to help you? Consecrate your heart, consecrate your heart. Consecrate your heart, consecrate your heart, consecrate your heart. Let the right stuff go in so that the right stuff can come out. Let the right stuff go in so that the right stuff can come out. Deliberately say, Lord, I bring in the right stuff. I breathe in so I can breathe out. I breathe in so I can breathe out. I breathe in so I can breathe out. You can only breathe out what you breathe in. You want to breathe out wisdom. You want to breathe out stuff that will edify the church. You have to breathe in. Breathe in what you can breathe out. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'll give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Our Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the way you've taught us the word. We thank you for insights. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for revelation. We pray, Lord, that you help us to become believers indeed. In the name of Jesus, help us to be doers of the word, not hearers only. In the name of Jesus. We Lord, as we start our transformation journey, we pray that our lives will be indeed transformed to glorify your name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.